Hello, this is Jay from Cucumber Shop, and um, today I'm just showing you a little bit about my uh, website, just because I feel that a lot of people come here and they, they don't really know what's going on. So I'll just kind of show you around and um, help you to understand things. This is not so anyone necessarily will buy my products, but just to kind of explain what Cucumber Shop's about and what we do. So, um, the about page um, just kind of says we discover as many carousel and other cucumbers as possible. Really, we're looking at for primarily indigenous to uh, specific areas of the world. Um, preserve as many as we can uh, and help the original donors replenish their seed stock and then uh, provide access to these cucumbers to others. So um, that's most of what we do. Um, I focus a lot on melons that are grown immature as cucumbers, um, musk melons that are uh, picked kind of like zucchini, yet eaten like cucumbers. And so uh, we'll get it, start going into the products and, and I'll explain a little more. This is one of my favorite products, really, really, um, good. It is uh, the striped carousel lecheze or meloncella facciata and uh, the quality is really good on that one. So um, a lot of you may be familiar with the snake melon or uh, Armenian cucumber. This is just the light Armenian cucumber and um, uh, it's kind of it's a melon that's picked immature like a cucumber and all these that um, in this first half of my website are melons that are picked immature as cucumbers. Um, so there's a light variety, then there's a dark variety, which um, may or may not have originated in Italy. Um, the Italians definitely like the Tortorello Barise, is what they call it. Um, and then uh, I selected a much uh, longer variant of the dark Armenian um, that's consistently long and so that's the one I uh, call the long dark Armenian cucumber. Um, over here is the painted serpent. It's uh, like the striped Armenian and um, so uh, a lot of these Armenians are getting more difficult to find good seed of in bulk so um, while I'm growing uh, out the more rare varieties. Sometimes I, I get some seed in bulk, but a lot of it's getting really difficult to find good seeds. So um, I, I purchase seed from Italy if I can't find it domestically in the United States. Uh, this is the Fakusa. This is from an island off of uh, Sardinia called um, a, a little town called Carlo Forte. And, uh, and so that it's pretty rare. Uh, and this is a Fakus from uh, the Palestine area and uh, all melons grown in mature cucumbers and all these right here are um, are of the uh, flexiosis um, sub variety of uh, cucumis mellow so and forgive me if I say any of these uh, Latin words improperly but there you have it um, this is a carousel about a tiri. It is, um, it's not, so it, it is not specifically a regular caracello. It's, it's not genetically like some of the other caracello, um, but it is a melon grown in mature as a cucumber that comes from Italy. So we call it a caracello, even though uh, it's more properly a baratari, which is uh, a, another type of melon that's grown in mature as a cucumber in Italy. Um, this is the Carousel of Barise. We have a smooth variant and a grooved variant. Um, the grooved variant has more hair, the smooth variant no hair, and, and more kind of smooth uh, flesh. And um, both all these uh, melons that you can eat immature as cucumbers, they're bitter free, they don't cause indigestion. And a lot of times they're higher quality than regular cucumbers if you get them right out of the um, you know, out of your garden or whatever. And they're really, really good. Um, so yeah, they love the heat. Uh, they're, they're, they're heat loving plants. Um, so both, the, both of these uh, Caracelo Barise 
they are, um, I'm not sure if they're really uh, special at all. Um, the, the smooth uh, Carasota Brise is pretty much the same thing as the light um, Lachese, and this uh, grooved one is a lot like uh, a Mezzolongo Brise or something like that. Um, so I'm not sure how long I will continue uh, carrying these ones, but I have these two for this current amount of time. Um, but yeah, there you have that. Um, and this is the Carousel Fasano or Cianciufo. It's a lot like the Baratiri. There's uh, very little difference, um, but I have a hard time keeping the bowl stock because um, it's, it's uh, I keep buying seed from Italy. Um, I just haven't gotten around to growing those on my own. Uh, this is a Mezzolongo uh, Barise or uh, medium long of berry. Um, and the Mezzolongo Polignano, a medium long of Polignano. Both of these are fuzzy, um, dense fruit. Uh, they have, uh, what can I say? Uh, they're really good if you like dense fruit. Um, they both produce like uh, a lot of, a lot of um, Caracelo, including this one, the Caracelo Burise. Um, begin kind of like zucchini they'll produce fruit in the crown of the plant like um, clusters of fruit in the crown of the plant just like a zucchini would and you need to pick them off and like a zucchini um, the, the mezzolongo barista um, i'm selecting them to get a little longer and the mezzolongo polignano are supposed to be a bit shorter so that's going to be my future selection as i continue forward i've been working on that a bit but um Sometimes when I grow at the end of the season, I'm fighting uh, powdery mildew and whatnot and can't get really high quality seeds. So, you know, just working around that. Uh, this is a Caracel Spreta Lechese, and this is um, the splotch dark Caracel Spreta Lechese, and this is the uh, Caracel Spreta Lechese girl, which is very dark. Um, so, uh, this middle variety and the first variety are genetically identical. It's just um, the one on the left I can get seed for, and the one in the middle uh, I grew myself from the same kind of seed on the left. However, the middle one has uh, better patterns, and I selected it for the nice patterns and, and, and kind of more cylindrical fruit. Whereas the one on the left, sometimes uh, the shape is not 100% perfect and the color is not 100% dark and uh, can get a little dry or, I guess, more dense flesh. The one on the right here is definitely the most superb of the three. Um, very dark flesh, very uh, juicy, uh, high quality, uh, a lot like the striped. Uh, Lechese or Melancello Facciata. Here's the car light Carousel Lechese. Uh, between the Carousel Brise and the Carousel uh, and the light Lechese, the light Lechese is higher quality product, more consistent uh, cylindrical fruit. And then here's the striped Carousel Lechese, cylindrical fruit, high quality, um, really gourmet, can't ask for much else. Uh, the Scopatizo Brise say here on the right is a um, has some really thick ridging and uh, grooves in the fruit from one pole to the other and it's um, right in there between light and dark um, that is classic uh, scopatizo somewhere between light and dark uh, so anyway all these are uh, most all of these are very ancient um, melons that are grown in matures cucumbers um, and so yeah we'll just keep at this um, from about the time of the early Egyptians um, all the way through the present time people kept these and used these as cucumbers even though they're melons um, this is a, a checkered selection that I made of the uh, Scopatizo Barise um, it's very consistently checkered um, I found it in whew, about six years ago. I, uh, I was really fortunate to find it and then uh, I grew it out again uh, two years ago and then grew it out again this year. So um, kind of had a year in between each time, but it's a 
fantastic looking and tasting variety. Um, really pleased with that. Uh, this is a Melanchella Tondo Tonda di Galatina. It's an incredible variety. It's parthenocarpic. Um, and it is, it's really neat, but um, it's hard to get seed from a lot of parthenocarpic fruit it is difficult to get seed of. And it, this is extraordinarily rare, this variety. Um, here's the Carousel Tonda Brise, very high quality, uh, very high quality. Um, and as you can see here, produces just like a zucchini with all that cluster of fruit in the, in the middle of the plant. Um, and here's the Tondo di Mandoria. Um, this is a good variety, but it is, uh, it is what we call polymorphic. It has two different uh, types. It has a splotched, as you can see up here on the top, and a light. And uh, genetically, this one is not 100% um, pure. So I had a friend, um, a, a farmer from Italy, who provided me with seed of this variety and some other varieties. Um, I was really excited to grow this one out, very excited to get something pure. Um, however, this one's got a lot of genetic diversity as well. And the texture is not uh, is tender as the original um, Tondo di Mandoria that you would get from uh, a seed company. So in any case, there you have it. Um, and here's the Tondo Massifra. It's a dark cucumber with light stripes or a light cucumber with dark stripes. It's a uh, very good. And you uh, pick these when they're about the size of a peach. Um, that's what you do with a lot of these. A lot of the round ones you pick when they're the size of the peach. Um, and uh, this is kind of a lighter version of the Massifra. This is the Massifreeze. We just kind of, um, this one kind of came to the community within the, probably within the last 10 years or so, um, based off the massive raw that we keep, we keep trying to select this one to be dark, but uh, we keep getting um, lighter uh, versions of it. Uh, this is a Pupendendra Bianca. So uh, this is a definitely a carousel of variety. Um, a uh, gentleman passed away in a, about the year 2000, 15 years later, um, a farmer in Italy, in southern Italy, uh, was talking with some friends. They said, oh, we have these seeds. And so he grew them out. And we eventually got this white variety that he's been looking for for a while. I'm, I'm working on improving the variety. So there you have it. Um, up to this point are all um, mostly melons or cucumber cucumber melons that you would find in Italy or the surrounding area. Um, the next couple are melons that are grown immature as cucumbers that you'll find in other places. This one comes from, this is a beta messer. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that properly, um, but it comes from Turkey. And uh, over here is the Ara cucumber, if I said that properly, from northern uh, northern India, India um, from Rajasthan area, and this is probably the most heat resistant variety. A little dry, but ooh, this variety is just incredible. It's got some really weird characteristics. It bleeds red. Um, it reflects the sun, and uh, it's it's pretty amazing. Um, from here on out, out uh, we have regular cucumbers. So um, in here on out, I just um, I just have varieties that are uh, named. You can see they, they go alphabetically. So in my regular cucumbers, I have picklers. These two first two are picklers. Arkansas little leaf is parthenocarpic. That's pretty cool. Um, and then uh, Ashley is 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 also also pickling or fresh eating. Uh, Bayad Alpha. It's a Lebanese variety, pickling variety. Uh, China Jade is a uh, Asian variety. This parthenocarpic. It's pretty. It's pretty amazing and pretty interesting. Um, I grew that out this last year to seed and uh, really did some neat stuff with that one. Uh, Crystal Apple, I guess, is a variety that um, came through Australia, Diva, uh, produced by Johnny's. Um, 
I believe probably with some beta alpha uh, genetics in there. Um, not super parthenocarpic, um, even though they say it is. I tried it in my greenhouse, it didn't yield very parthenocarpic. We have some other varieties. English Telegraph is um, a very popular English variety. Um, then we have some of the uh, Indian or around uh, India area um, storage cucumbers like the Gagon and the Mong Red. Screen finger. This is a more recent open pollinated variety from um, the US. Um, little potato or carabalum. Uh, this is another Indian variety. Uh, lemon cucumber, classic. Uh, market more. Miniature white and muncher, national pickling. Northern pickling, punakira. Russian pickling, salt and pepper. I grew this one out. I tried my best this last year, but it was kind of near the end of the season. Plants grew all the way to producing fruit. They did well, but um, what can I say? The seed didn't turn out so well. So I'm uh, probably gonna have to work with some other farmers to get some seed of that. I'm hoping possibly to get some in January. I really like uh, salt and pepper. Uh, Shintakawa, that one was pretty good. That one was pretty good. I grew that one out. Uh, Seacum, it's another uh, storage variety that I grew out. Um, Silver Slicer, Space Master, Sumter, um, Tender Green. I like that one. That's kind of a Bayed Alpha type. Um, yeah, Wisconsin SMR 58. This is a pickling variety. Yo Cow, this is a variety I really, really like. Um, kind of a multi-purpose variety, did really well for me last year. And then uh, down here we have uh, some things that really aren't cucumbers, but mm, you know, you could eat them as cucumbers. To me, the uh, Mexican sour gherkins, uh, creeping cucumbers, um, cucamelons, sandietas, whatever you call them. They're, um, these, this one's from Mexico and this one's from the US. These are okay. I mean, like they're kind of fun because they're like little, little watermelons or whatever. To me, they kind of taste like melon rind. I mean, like, uh, sorry, cucumber rind. So it's not that good, in my opinion. That's just me, though. Um, but kind of novelty. If you want something that grows like a weed, definitely grow the creeping cucumber. That thing's so weedy. Um, any kind of time it touches the ground on any of the inner nodes, it will reroot. And um, it can be hard to get rid of in a moderate climate. So if you really want a cucumber that you, or some kind of fruit that just keeps producing, keeps producing, it's hard to get rid of. There you have it. For those of you who uh, don't have a natural green thumb, um, so that's kind of it about cucumber shop. I have um, over here. I have my about page, which I I showed you a little bit of. I've got a lot more to that. Um, I have my cucumberpedia, which you know I kind of explain some some different things. You know, here I'm explaining what cucumber, what carousel cucumbers are, and where they're from. Um, and, and I explain some other things the best that I can based on uh, what I'm able to do, you know. Um, so I think that that's about it. I really hope that uh, this gives you a better idea of what we at Cucumber Shop do and uh, kind of some of what I hope, um, I really hope to be able to give uh, gardeners uh, varieties that do really well are fun to grow and quick and easy to uh, produce, especially in, in the Southwest, uh, where it's really hard to grow a lot of um, good uh, cucumbers or any kind of vegetables. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is Jay from Cucumber Shop. I really wish you a happy season and uh, happy gardening.